shall declare your glory, every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you'll be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. O ancient of days. O ancient of days. मती सुसमाचार चौदह अध्याय तेरह से इक्कीस जब यीशु ने यह सुना तो यह वह नौ पर चढ़कर वहां से किसी सुनसान जगह को एकांत में चला गया लोग यह सुनकर नगर नगर से पैदल ही उसके पीछे पहुंचे उसने निकलकर एक बड़ी भीड़ देखी और उस पर तरस खा और उनके बीमारों को चंगा किया जब सांझ हुई तो उसके चेलों ने उसके पास आकर कहा ये सुनसान जगह है और देर हो गई है लोगों को विदा किया जाए कि वे बस्ती में जाकर अपने लिए भोजन लें पर यीशु ने उनसे कहा उनका जाना आवश्यक नहीं तुम ही उन्हें खाने को दो उन्होंने उससे कहा हमारे यहाँ पांच मछलियाँ और दो पांच रोटी और दो मछलियाँ कुछ और, और कुछ नहीं किया उन्होंने कहा उनको यहाँ मेरे पास लिया तब उसने लोगों को घास पर बैठने को कहा और उन पांच रोटियों और दो मछलियों को लिया और सड़क की ओर देखकर धन्यवाद किया और रोटियाँ तोड़ तोड़ कर चेलों को दी और चेलों ने लोगों को जब सब खाकर तृप्त हो गए तो चेलों ने बचे हुए टुकड़ों से भरी हुई बारह टोपियाँ उठाई और खाने वाले स्त्रियों और बच्चों को छोड़ पाँच हजार पुरुषों के लगभग थे ये प्रभु का बच्चों में पड़े जाने के लिए
Thank you.
good evening and praise the Lord. So we are gathered here together once again to study from the Word of God from Matthew 14 and verses 13 to 21. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come into your presence once again, thanking you and praising you for every opportunity you provide for us, Father, to sing of your praises, to thank you of your gratefulness for the grace that you give us, Lord, and for the mercy that you extend to us, Heavenly Father. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we are going to look at uh, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 14 and verses 13 to 21. Now this is a very famous parable which each one of us has learned in our childhood as well as even in our uh, spiritual walk with uh, God, we come across this parable very often that teaches us compassion and it teaches us power. Compassion and power of the Lord Jesus Christ. It talks about uh, what happens, what Jesus faces and undergoes uh, after the death of John. He was so fond of him uh, he, uh, that he would have wanted to withdraw and have a rest. But what this parable tells us is completely different. So let's develop an understanding of first the setting of this parable. Now this parable is set in a place called Galilee. And we all know how big Galilee was. Galilee must have been a place where it was very difficult for Jesus to have been alone. Or for anyone for that matter to be, to be uh, left alone. It was a small country and the history tells us that it was only about 50 miles from the north to south and 20 miles from east to west. And Josephus tells us that in his time, within that small area, there were 204 towns and villages, none with a population of less than 15,000 people. In such a thickly populated area, it was not easy to get away from people for any length of time. But on the other side of the town, on the other side of the town where it separated it from the lake. And that lake also was not very wide. It was just eight miles wide. And it was quiet on the other side. And so Jesus perhaps wanted to get onto the other side to have some rest and quiet and be uh, with himself and be with God after he had heard the death of John. However, people would have seen him get onto a boat and they would have all been ready to meet with him when he arrived on the other side. Jesus' friends were all fisher folk. And so, when he heard the death of John, Jesus embarked on one of their boats and then stepped on the east side of the lake for some peace and quiet. There were three perfectly simple and natural reasons why Jesus would have wished to be alone. He was also human and he needed rest. He never recklessly ran into any danger and it was well to withdraw lest too early he, he would share the same fate of John. And most of all, we all know, with the cross coming nearer and nearer, Jesus knew that he must meet with God before he met with men. He was seeking rest for his body and strength for his soul in the lonely places. But it was not to be. People saw him. They flocked around him. They were waiting for him at the other side when he arrived. And lo and behold, when Jesus saw them, what was his reaction? Did he say, oh, why are these people crowding around me, not letting me have my peace and quiet? Would he have told his disciples, send them all away? None of these things happened. He was calm and he was quiet. He was filled with compassion, the Bible tells us. And so he told his disciples, let them all be there. He healed them. And when the evening came, when the disciples told them to let the people go, Jesus said, no, let them all be there. And he fed them before they took the long road home. And how did he feed them? He performed a miracle. So this parable talks of nothing but the compassion of Jesus and the power of Jesus. 
When Jesus saw the crowds, the Bible tells us he was moved with compassion. This was a wonderful thing. Jesus had come to find peace and quiet and loneliness. He could have easily resented them because they were invading his privacy. Was he to have no rest? What about us? Imagine we come back to the house tired, looking for some peace and quiet and then we find somebody waiting for us. What do we do? Are we irritable? Are we impatient? Do we drive them away? Or are we keeping an eye, an eye on the clock to see when they will move away? Jesus was not like that. Far from finding these people who were in multitudes, far from finding them a nuisance, he was moved with compassion. And so here we have a lesson to learn. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we must never deal with people with one eye on the clock as if we were anxious to be rid of them as soon as we decently can. In this story, we see Jesus witnessing that all gifts are from God. He blessed the bread uh, he, and he blessed the loaves of bread and he blessed the fish. He took the food and he said a blessing. Here we see Jesus showing that it is God's gift which he brings to men. The grace of gratitude is rare enough towards men. It is rarer still towards God. The miracle informs us very clearly of the place of the disciple in the work of Christ. Jesus did not do it alone. Please note, Jesus did not do it alone. He asked the disciples to come and work for him. The story tells us that Jesus gave to the disciples and the disciples gave to the crowd. Jesus worked through the hands of his disciples that day and he continues to do so through his disciples, which could be you and me. Again and again we come face to face with this truth which is at the heart of the church. It is true that the disciple is helpless without his Lord. But it is also true that the Lord is helpless without his disciple. If Jesus wants something done, if he wants a child taught or a person helped, he has to get a man to do it. He needs people through whom he can act and through whom he can speak. Jesus needs disciples through whom he can work and through whom his truth and his love can enter into the lives of others. He needs men to whom he can give in order that they may give to others. Without such men, he cannot get things done and it is our task to be such men, women, youth and children for him. It would be easy to be daunted and discouraged by a task of such magnitude. But there is another thing in the story that may lift up our hearts. When Jesus told the dis disciples to feed the crowd, they told him that they had all they had was five loaves and two fish. And yet with what they brought to Jesus, Jesus wrought this miracle. Jesus sets every one of us the tremendous task of communicating himself to men. But he does not demand from us splendors and magnificence that we do not possess. He says to us, come to me as you are. However ill-equipped, bring to me what you have, however little, and I will use it greatly in my service. Little is always much in the hands of Christ. And so dear brothers and sisters and children in Christ, do not hesitate when you have to give to the church. However little we may have today, maybe Corona has taken away our uh, earnings. Maybe it has reduced what we used to get earlier. But what little we have, give of that to the Lord because he will bless it hundred, several thousand folds and make it sufficient for us and for our needs. Give generous. Give generously. God gives to men with magnificence, but a wasteful extravagance is never right. God's generous giving and our wise using must go hand in hand. When Jesus despises extravagance, can we control on our extravagance and give to the Lord what is due to him? We may look at this parable as a simple multiplication of loaves and fishes. Many people 
in this miracle see a sacrament. They have felt that those who were present received only the smallest morsel of food and yet with that they were strengthened for their journey and were content. There may have been a lot of people over there who would have felt selfish to give what they were carrying. Maybe there were some people who were carrying food with them but they felt selfish to give it. Yet this little boy, he gave all that he had. This is a miracle which is reenacted every time we sit at the table of our Lord. For there comes to us the spiritual food which sends us out to walk with firmer feet and greater strength, the way of life which leads to God. Let's have that faith of the little boy who gave everything that he had with this strength, with this uh, belief that the Lord Jesus will make everything right. This miracle was the miracle of the birth of love in grudging hearts. It was the miracle of changed men and women with something of Christ in them to banish their selfishness. And so, brothers and sisters, it does not matter how we understand this miracle. One thing is sure, when Christ is there, the weary find rest and the hungry soul is fed. And so let's all come together in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to give of what we have to help those who are in need of all that we have. And so let us not hesitate to be disciples of Christ because that, that's what Christ is expecting us to be. He needs us just as we need him much more than we ever imagined. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing these parables to us again and again. For it strengthens us. It explains to us how much you love us. How much you have compassion over us. For us. And you have such great power that nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is unachievable for you, Father. We pray, Lord, that you strengthen us, make us your disciples, that we can take forward your word, your compassion, your love, your mercy and your grace to many through, your, through our discipleship of you, Father. Help us to follow you every moment of the day and fulfill the command that you have given us. Bless us, Heavenly Father, with love, joy, peace and contentment. We need you, Lord. Be with us. Never leave us. Not forsake us just as you have promised us. For those who are still hungering for you, Heavenly Father, for those who have still not tasted you, Father, we pray, Lord, that you will fill them with your Spirit. In Jesus' most precious and holy name we pray. Have a blessed evening and days to come. God bless you all. Say, but
زمین اور آسمان کے خالق پر مالے یہ عنایت کریں کہ آپ کا پاک ہو آپ کی کلیسیا میں اس قدر کام کرے کہ ہم اپنی زندگی کو ٹٹو لیں اور ہم اپنے الفاظوں پر دھیان دیں کہ خدا بند ہمارے شب دوسروں کو ٹھیس پہنچانے کے لئے نہیں بلکہ آپ کی بادشاہت کو بڑھانے کے بعد ہو سکیں یہ نایت کریں اپنے بیٹے ہمارے درمیانی اور فدیہ دینے والے خدا منیش مسیح کے بسیدے سے آمین The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
सजाएंगे है ईश्व महान अपना सुनाएंगे आवाज उठाएंगे ना देख सका So that-